So the third question is the following. We discussed depression and addiction. Do the mechanisms behind other mental disorders, such as various anxiety disorders, somatoform disorders, have to do with certain primary process affective systems from below being overactivated and the cognitive regulating system from above being weakened? Might anxiety result from a conflict between incompatible basic instincts? So there are two questions. The first is, we've spoken about the uh, basic emotion systems involved in depression and those involved in addiction. And the question is, are other basic emotion systems likewise um, intimately bound up with the other classes of psychopathology? And the answer, uh, it, 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 in a nutshell, is yes. Um, that's not to say that all psychopathologies can be reduced in a one-to-one -one, uh, way uh, to uh, individual basic emotion systems in the brain. But these basic emotion systems are the natural kinds of our emotional lives. And psychological, psychiatric disorders are fundamentally emotional disorders. And uh, this is a very useful way for approaching, for taxonomizing, for trying to um, uh, classify the ba basic moving parts at work in psychopathology. The uh, classificatory schemes that we inherited through the DSMs of America and the ICDs of Europe, uh, these classificatory schemes are derived from um, the history of our disciplines, really. They're sort of um, conventions derived from the idiosyncrasies of how the theoretical schools of our disciplines evolved and how we uh, you know, uh, made ad hoc uh, discoveries along the way. It's not been a systematic um, progression and it's by no means been based on um, natural scientific evidence for the most part. So it really does represent the possibility of the dawn of a whole new era in psychiatry for us to ground our understanding of psychopathology on these natural kinds of emotion built into the mammalian brain. That's why um, we find that the attachment or the, the, the separation distress, um, the so-called panic grief system, uh, why that's so important for depression. It's, uh, we understand much better what depression is um, when we understand the role of that system in it. And it has all sorts of implications, for example, for the development of new psychopharmacologies, it also has all sorts of implications for understanding the psychology of uh, these uh, uh, disorders and, most importantly to me, for um, bridging the gap between the psychology and the psychopharmacology. These are just two ways of treating and understanding what is ultimately one and the same thing. And uh, as we've understood how these basic emotion systems of the brain work, so we've understood why these disorders mean what they do psychologically and why the chemistries um, in question are the relevant ones. And also we come to understand that you can't treat patients, psychiatric patients, as if they were pickled cucumbers. You know, it's not a matter of add a little bit of dopamine. It's like they're not chemistry sets. These systems evolved in relation to certain social, environmental uh, situations of universal significance. They mean something. So, for example, if somebody is depressed, it means that there's something to do with loss going on here, something to do with um, the sorts of things that that system is designed uh, to prevent, uh, the, the loss of loving, safe attachments and so on. Now, the question uh, is, uh, are other emotion systems involved in other psychopathologies? Absolutely. So uh, there's a mention of anxiety. Terribly important to recognize, for example, that there are two types of anxiety in the brain. Uh, there's panic anxiety, which I've just spoken about, separation distress. Um, and that panicky type of anxiety is terribly important for understanding depression. It's also terribly important for understanding some of the disorders that so often co-occur with depression or precede depression, like, for example, panic disorder. Uh, it has a very high comorbidity with depression. Likewise, obsessive-compulsive disorder. The quality of the anxiety in OCD is a panicky type of anxiety. So OCD is classified as an anxiety, dis I mean, uh, uh, yeah, and, and, as an anxiety disorder, and panic disorder is an anxiety disorder, but depression is a mood disorder. And yet, in fact, these three things belong together. Um, 
there's one natural kind. And borderline personality disorder belongs in that mix too. Understanding that all of these disorders have something to do with fear of or anxiety about separation, loss, um, and, 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 and attachment bonding, and so on, uh, really um, opens vast new vistas for psychiatry. The other type of anxiety is fear anxiety. Fear has a quite different anatomical representation, a quite different neurochemistry, quite different behavioral phenotypes. So uh, some of the other anxiety disorders classified in these artificial taxonomies of psychiatry, like um, phobias, for example, these are disorders for the most part of fear. They're not disorders uh, of the same natural kind as, as panic disorder or as OCD. Um, and um, fear anxiety in relation to post-traumatic stress disorder, for example, is another, uh, there's a close connection between post-traumatic stress disorder and, the, and the, the functioning of the fear anxiety system. This is not metaphorically speaking, this is literally speaking. You know, you, when you image the brain um, in, a, in the ac active uh, PTSD symptomatic state, you see this system activated. This, it's a medial temporal system going down into the periaqueductal gray amygdala, uh, via diencephalic uh, structures to um, periaqueductal gray. This really gives us a solid handle on, on what these disorders really are. Um, but to come, and I could carry on like that, you know, talking about, for example, the play instinct in relation to ADHD and so on and so forth, um, uh, the, the, the seeking system, uh, overaction, uh, overactivation of the seeking system in psychotic disorders, etc. But I think it's important to lead on to um, and conclude with the second part of the question, which is uh, also um, um, following up on my remark that there's not a one-to-one -one relationship between psychopathologies and these, um, and these basic emotion systems. Um, the question was, you know, might anxiety not arise out of a conflict between two incompatible emotions? And that's a very good example of, of exactly what does happen. Um, so take the hypothetical example of being attached to your mum. That's this uh, attachment system, the separation distress system. And uh, you might simultaneously be enraged by your mum. You know, she frustrates you. So you have these two not only incompatible um, feelings toward the same object, uh, if you can call your mum an object. But, uh, you know, they are directly in conflict with each other in the sense that your rage at your mum uh, might in fact exacerbate your fear of losing her. Um, I, I hope you can see what I mean by that. This is not some sort of mumbo-jumbo. It's this sort of everyday occurrence of childhood. The ambivalence that we feel toward our parents is a source of enormous um, difficulty for children and for all of us, so the, for the internalization of these, of these relationships. So yes, the answer is yes, indeed, that um, um, uh, disorders can and do arise out of conflicts between uh, these different systems. Um, but, but still, the, 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 the understanding of what the fundamental moving parts of the machinery of the mind are um, gives us deep insight uh, and, and very promising for the future of psychiatry uh, into what um, psychopathology really consists in.